Thank you all for joining us on our talk today in which we take you through a deep dive of Google Cloud's IAM Recommender. And we will walk you through how Uber was successful in minimizing permissions using this solution. Sonal and the Uber team provided us with valuable insights during early stages, and they'll be sharing Uber's journey and improving IAM for their cloud environment. Hi, Sonal. Thank you, Abhi. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Sonal, and I am a security engineer at Uber. I'm thrilled to be here today to talk about how IAM Recommender helped us identify a significant number of overgranted permissions in our GCP infrastructure and help us bring closer to our goal of achieving least privilege. Great, let's get started. So today we're gonna to talk a lot about IAM policies. So let's first start with a quick refresher for those who might not be too familiar with an anatomy of IAM policy. So policies as shown here today are a list of bindings of roles to members. Roles contain permissions and it can be referenced once in a policy. Members can include groups, users, service accounts, and more. Here, things can get a bit complex if the group contains nested group as members. The policy also contains an audit config that determines which permission types are logged. The policy document is attached or applied at a resource. For example, it can be applied on a project and then inherits downward to all the resources in that project. So effective access for a member is a combination of the roles in this policy and a union of all of those inherited from above, like from a folder. Now, policy evaluation always traverses the hierarchy tree downward. This is why, in some cases, managing project-level policies is recommended. Lastly, remember that setting policy programmatically replaces any existing policy on the resource. So think about it as a whole and not just the delta to avoid removing any old content that was already there. Now, assuming you understand that well, let's think about whether your policies are constructed accurately to reduce security risk exposure. Ideally, you want to reach a state of least privilege where you limit the attack surface by granting users only the access or the permissions they need. But we found with, when it comes to risk exposure, people tend to underestimate the risk they're in. It's only human nature. And while digging into this problem space with our customers, we found that consistently across the board, admins were granting way more permissions than their users needed. One reason was to ensure that developers could do what they want but also because changing policies is complex and they didn't want to break anything, but this exposes them to risk. So we heard our customers ask for tooling to understand this risk and help them get towards a state of least privilege. Another big problem in the cloud is human misconfiguration. So what was needed was some advanced tools that admins can turn on for their end users to detect bad policies self-diagnosis in a way that goes a long way to give admins the power to say, it's not only up to the individual project teams, but I'm gonna check for these bad things as well. So if you're a security professional who's concerned about this, here is some prescriptive guidance from Google on how you should think about getting to least privilege. As with most things, start with the why. First, understand how much access is provisioned across your production workloads. Um, to initiate any kind of policy cleanup, you will first need data that's compelling and based on actual usage. Then tie that cleanup back to organization goals like containing insider risk, which is one of the lead leading causes of breaches and fines. And aim towards educating your project teams so they are better aware of their risk posture and they are driving towards cultural change. Then, as you are re ready to start taking action, create a phase plan that starts with reducing permissions towards a safer baseline. Most customers opt to do a quarterly access review. And then for high privilege roles like owner and editor, we recommend a higher cadence, which could be on a daily basis. Lastly, you can also prioritize based on the member. So you should pay attention to service accounts, maybe start there. And to reduce grants and service accounts, and especially look for service account impersonation permissions if they are not needed for individual members. Also, look for dormant users who might be orphaned but present in your policies. And, and lastly, in terms of who does this, we feel in order for this to be successful with the right tooling, 
least privilege should be the responsibility of all project teams and not just security professionals. So here's where IAM Recommender comes in. It helps security and non-security professionals identify and remove unwanted access to GCP by using machine learning to make smart access control recommendations. Right here in the IAM page, the recommender is going to show you how many permissions you have given and what is actually being used. There's no need to collect and parse through access logs. We've done all that hard work for you. In the backend, we store and process petabytes of data on a daily basis. All of this is at no additional charge to our customers. We now simply show you this information, show you this compelling data right next to the user's assigned role. Now, it looks like most of the users in my project here are, are okay. Um, and a few of them are using a lot less than they were granted. You will see here that three light bulbs have popped up. This is where our ML models have found a recommendation for a better fitting role. Automatically, in the background, I had to do no work. The service account here on the top row has the owner role with about 1,800 permissions, but it's only using 31 out of them. So here, I am recommender shows me that I must change its role to reduce security risk. Now, if I'm interested in details, I can double click and get some more analysis behind the recommendation. So here, the tool is showing me that this service account should be moved to the BigQuery admin role and why? By highlighting the permissions that are safe to remove in red. ML also picks up that this account will need the saved queries update permission in the future based on similar usage patterns. Now, this is a permission it already has, but it has not used. And you can find this marked with the blue ML icon everywhere in the Cloud Console. So this helps make sure that this user or account does not miss out on permissions and you don't need to come back later to request more. And now in our latest update, we've also added the ability for you to customize the recommendation. So if you want to remove a permission or add one, you can do that right here in the recommendation screen in context, which creates a custom role. And now this custom role will be based on actual activity data and improved with Google ML to suggest which permissions you should add based on observed patterns in the cloud. So as a user, you just need to hit apply to make the change and this custom role gets created. And now it should be recommended to other users who have the same similar need. Now, Uber has taken some really innovative steps with our recommendations, and they've integrated this into their security automation pipeline. So now to take you through that journey, so now we'd love to understand what you've done and with our recommendations. Thank you, Abhi. Uh, Uber has a tripod strategy for infrastructure. We maintain on-premise and we have a presence in AWS and GCP. In GCP, we are a large scale shop. You can see we have 90,000 role bindings alone. Our cloud security team is responsible for security in AWS and GCP. Our team's mission is to enable our partner teams, which are our business teams, to conduct business as usual and leverage cloud in a secure and efficient way. We are interested with functions like inventory management, asset management, roles granting, and provisioning in the cloud. At Uber, we would like builders to build. With the above functions in mind, we would like to strike a balance between our partner teams and the security team. And it is hard to do because partner teams want ease of allocating resources in the cloud, they want ease of maintaining their resources, and we want to encourage ownership in them. As a cloud team, we would like our eyes to be on our cloud infrastructure. We would like to remediate over granted permissions and overall maintain least privilege. And by that, I mean reduce our attack surface and apply permissions as needed. So let's focus on over granted permissions. Over provisioning can lead to data breaches. For example, an identity that has high privilege role gets compromised and is used to access PCI PII data. This is data with high level of data classification as needed by compliance. This can lead to severe problems. It is a real world example and we have seen it before, it is quite common. Asking engineers to choose a more nuanced role is confusing to them. They often resort in picking up editor or owner roles because 
it gets the work done. So then what is our approach to least privilege? We would like to monitor our footprint. What are our cloud assets? What are our identities? How many roles are for those identities? We have targeted use cases in mind. For example, service account with primitive roles, which each of these roles having more than 2,500 permissions. Same for user accounts and Google groups. Then we have the orphaned accounts. For example, a coworker has left the company. And in Uber's case, the account needs to be cleaned up in GCP environment. Then there are the older unused permissions. These are not used by anybody. They are simply lying around unacknowledged. We would like to clean them up. With this, we have two solutions in mind. One is create a ticket for the partner teams, simply because we do not have enough business context. In the ticket, we'll provide enough information of why the ticket is generated and how to go about fixing it. The second one is to auto apply the recommendation by the security team itself, and it will be done in an automated way. So with the least privilege in mind, we would like our recommendations to be data backed. In our experience with a previous cloud provider, we found that we had to manually write scripts to find out the activity log, determine the access pattern, and then put the data into sheet and then go through each of that data manually and try to remediate the recommendation. It often leads to problems like access denied because there is no other intelligence to the recommendation than simply the access traffic. Enter GCP IAM recommender with all the bells and whistles of being based on historical activity logs and being backed by ML, wherein it predicts if a role might be needed in near future. We do not have to pay for the logs because IAM recommender does all the heavy lifting of collecting, storing, and analyzing logs. It is also API driven, which makes it possible to automate and make it a repeatable process. So what is our solution? This is a very high level overview of how we have automated IAM Recommender. The major components are manager. Manager runs periodically to get recommendations from the IAM Recommender API. It simplifies the recommendations to be used internally and then stores it into a database. It then invokes an action. Action is a rules-based engine it determines what should be the remediation step for the recommendation and it also prioritizes. Because we have hundreds of projects and we have hundreds of recommendations for each of those projects, it was important for us to prioritize the recommendation. And hence, we introduced the concept of risk scoring. Our risk scoring is based on two steps. First, business rules. We started with the NIST framework and then we created our own business rules based on the tech and business priorities. For example, a project that has on-premise connectivity or a project that has data classification labels of PCI, PII, all the recommendations for that project will be marked with higher priority. The second is access type. Access type is based on the number of permissions and whether the type of access is edit and delete. It will have higher priority than say a view only role. The third step is remediate. The remediation could either be create a ticket for the partner team, in which case we'll create a JIRA ticket, or it could be auto applying the recommendation, which is an automated way that the pipeline kicks in and auto remediates. So now let's look into the detailed architecture. We wanted to make the architecture serverless and event-driven based on cloud functions and pops up so as to make it scalable and extensible to future use cases. The first step is to get the recommendations. We spoke about how the manager, which is a cloud function, and before I delve into the detail, we thought about this serverless event-driven architecture based on cloud functions and PubSub so as to make it scalable and extensible for future use cases. So our manager, which is a cloud function, runs periodically, in our case, on a daily basis, calls IAM Recommender API, fetches the recommendations, and stores it in a Firestore DB. The reason we chose Firestore is because it's easy to use. And we needed a NoSQL solution bearing the extensibility of the schema in mind. So then 
The second flow is where using data transfer jobs, we get recommendations from ARM recommender and store it into the BigQuery. BigQuery allows us to have a single pane of glass where we could see all the permissions across Uber org. The second component in the first step is Enricher. It has two main functions. It gets project details from resource manager and the project details could be who's the owner of the project or what was the create time of the project. And the second details it gets is from G Suite and it gets details about the active employees in the company right now. This is needed for the orphan use case. All these details are stored in Firestore DB. Then step two is where the manager invokes an action via PubSub. What is the action doing? The action reads the recommendation and determines what is the next step or what is the right remediation to apply to that recommendation. It also decides what is the priority and the risk code. So that is where we do prioritizing and actioning on each recommendation in the Firestore DB. Once this is done, we move on to step three, which is remediate. So in step three, if it is a create a ticket type of recommendation, then the action invokes an internal service. The internal service reads the details of the recommendation from Firestore DB and creates a JIRA ticket. If it's an auto apply type of recommendation, then the action invokes remediator, uh, which is basically a cloud function and the remediator reads the details from Firestore DB and it does then two steps. One, it calls IAM recommender to claim the recommendation and second, it calls Cloud IAM to apply that recommendation and mark it successful. Please note, like Abhi said before, apply the entire recommendation as a whole policy and not just a specific role binding. Now I would love to show you how we have built it. This is the cloud console where our project teams can go and see what are the IAM roles and what are the recommendations. For example, the first one that you can see is a service account for compute and it's been assigned an editor role and there is an icon from IAM recommender to suggest there's a recommendation for it. Next, our step one has kicked in and the manager calls IAM recommender API to get payload about the recommendations. This is what a typical payload looks like. As you can see, there are two actions being suggested. One is to remove the role and one is to add a role. Also note, there's an E tag, which we use for concurrency and versioning control. Each time there is an update to a recommendation, a new E tag is generated. Now comes step two. This is where the manager has simplified the recommendation for internal use. You can very clearly see the action is to remove the editor role and to add a smaller data proc worker role. And you can see the action has also given a severity, which is medium and a risk score. So we have prioritized it. Now the action has determined this particular case is for create a ticket type remediation. And that's why a JIRA ticket is created. This is a sample ticket here, but some things to note, the ticket is assigned to the project owner. In this case, it is me because I own the project. We also include a resource link so that project owners can directly click on the link and go to GCP console where they can see the actual recommendation. Then we have the description wherein we note why this ticket was generated and how to go about fixing it with detailed screenshots and steps. There is also a severity level or a priority level. Coming to step three, this is where a project owner can go in the cloud console and apply the remediation. You can see from our previous steps, this is the same service account for compute example. The recommendation is applied and now instead of editor role, it has the data proc worker role and there is no IAM recommender sign applied well there. So lessons learned. As with any product, it is important to spend time upfront in understanding the APIs and trust the recommendations or trust the data. Our technical design and approach came about from the proof of concept we did right in the beginning. It was very easy to apply 
auto apply all the recommendations we got but then we found that there were edge cases like backups or break glass accounts where we needed manual intervention learning the landscape we knew we had a problem with over granted permissions but we did not know how severe the problem was big query and data transfer jobs help us get a cross project overview across the org and understand our iim footprint encourage with a better understanding of our iim status it solidified our intent in going after our iim access and using iim recommender and finally being early adopters we got stuck at times here we were able to leverage our partnership with google in terms of technical expertise and product assistance it was a great overall learning experience and google was an awesome partner thank you thank you so i'm so happy to hear that and sharing your story super excited about customers like uber and thousands more who are using i am recommend every day to minimize their attack surface and achieve least privilege with least effort we introduced this product last year at next to provide ai for cloud governance and since then we have launched several new and interesting features first we have made policy utilization data more readily accessible with iam insights this lets you build custom reports or integrate recommendations into your governance tools second we now support recommendation of multiple granular roles to help you migrate off legacy roles like owner and editor next we have expanded our analysis and recommendations to groups so we now tell you if a group is over provision and what role to assign it lastly we now recommend creation of custom roles where if you find that a custom role can be used across your projects to reduce over granting of access we take you through the steps of creating that custom role and we have many more features in development that our customers are pretty excited about another area we have invested in is making recommendations easier to discover we felt this is an area that needed much more investment now project teams can self serve in the cloud console in the iam page as you have seen already and now they're also able to find recommendations in a recommendation hub that is located on the cloud console dashboard here project teams can review the insights and recommendations and apply them if they have the permission for central security teams we now support out of the box integration with bigquery with a few simple steps you can export all your recommendations to a bigquery table and this will allow you to create org wide custom reports for example if you want a view of over provisioning across your production workloads you can use our or analyze permissions for a given service account you can now do this easily with our analytical tools lastly we expose insights and recommendations through apis with methods such as get claim mark as succeeded so in addition to automating recommendations as we heard uber describe today some customers have used this to create alerts and reminders such as weekly digests that they send their project teams to alert them they need to take action We hope you've enjoyed this deep dive into IAM Recommender today. We are excited to announce that Recommender is a part of Active Assist, a brand new solution from Google Cloud that we have just announced. Active Assist is a new solution that focuses on reducing complexity in your cloud environment by providing you with a variety of intelligent and proactive features, many of them which are powered by machine learning. By using the capabilities within Active Assist, you are empowered to focus more of your time on your business and less on cloud administration by using the intelligent capabilities of active assist it makes it really easy and efficient for your teams to do their jobs especially with things like finding out what went wrong quickly so you can take action right away with insightful effective troubleshooting tools secondly preventing mistakes from happening altogether by relying on analysis tools before you commit to changes and lastly as we saw today improving your cloud easily with fast actionable recommendations with clear rationales for why to get started with active assist we encourage you to visit the website and go over to cloud console to the recommendation hub and the iam page and see if there are any recommendations there waiting for you some of the features we highlighted are only available in preview today But if you're interested in getting early access to all of these features as they get developed and give us feedback, we encourage you to join our insider group, which is linked on our website. 
And finally, check out these other cloud on-air sessions for deeper dive into some of these features. Thank you for your time. We hope you enjoyed our session today and happy ironing.